interesting. Well, let's take you back to the Black Star Square where my colleague Blazer Sogai is standing by uh, with an update on the public address by the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris as part of her state visit to Ghana. Blazer, uh, what's happening there as we speak? Waiting patiently for that moment when, of course, the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris will uh, show up on stage and deliver what is uh, expected to be a major policy speech. Uh, we do not know the content of what it is that will be said, but all that we can tell you is that there are lots of people here, lots of people who have gone through security checks waiting since morning, as early as 7 a.m., waiting for that moment where, of course, uh, the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, who's on a state visit to Ghana, will show up and make that major policy speech. Uh, she started off uh, by arriving on Sunday. Uh, just yesterday, there was an interaction, bilateral talks between uh, the president and uh, the U.S. Vice President at the Jubilee House. We met, we had uh, the president there welcome uh, the Vice President of the U.S. and indicate how, of course, the relations between Ghana and the U.S. continue uh, to rise in good terms. Uh, but here we have a lot of people who are typifying that good relations between the United States of America and the Republic of Ghana. And there are so many people here, including uh, Jonathan, who's returned just to be a part of history. You agree there's history? Yes, sir. Um, I'm really glad to be here. I'm a Ghanaian, so I definitely had to come and support. Uh, raised in the U.S., I'm part of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity. Um, it's an international organization, so we really wanted to come and support uh, the Vice President who is here uh, from the USA. You know, we, we uh, support all that she's doing. Ghana is leading the way internationally, so it's very important that she made this her first stop uh, coming, and we're so proud as Ghanaians to be a part of that. And so um, I'm just glad to be here. I'm just glad to be here to support. You see thousands of people out there. What, what, what do you surmise might be the reason for which we're seeing such a huge crowd here? Well, I think it's because of um, the popularity of the USA, first of all. And uh, people just want to be a part of this historic event. You know, Kamala Harris is the first black vice president in the USA. So that's a, a historical uh, um, thing in itself. And so we're proud of what she's doing. We're proud of that. We're proud as Ghanaians to come and support. You know, it's, it's terrible if she comes here and there's no aquaba from the Ghanaian people. That's what we're known for. So I'm just so glad to see thousands of Ghanaians here supporting um, her, her at the speech. Yeah, and indeed, we must point out that it's not just Ghanaians. We have a mixed race of people who are all out here doing that celebration. But Jonathan, let's talk about her visit and what it means for the African diaspora because we're in a phase of beyond the return where we're, the country is trying to harness the energy of the African diaspora uh, for development. Do you feel that the visit of Kamala Harris will further deepen that? Well, I think it definitely will. You know, um, the Minister of Tourism, Mr. Kwasi Ajimang, uh, Mr. Babio with the uh, President's Office of the Diaspora, they're doing a great job in promoting this uh, beyond the year of return. And as me being a, a Ghanaian who's returned after being in the States for almost 50 years, is all what it's about. You know, people are coming back to Ghana to be a part of it. So I think this just sends a great message to everybody abroad in the diaspora that come home to Ghana. Ghana is a place where you can do business, you can grow. And so I, I think this is my Monumental for Ghana. Aside the state visits, how can we harness further the likes of yourself, the energy from outside, those of the black race, to be a part of, of that concerted effort of using the African diaspora for development? Well, I think um, there are so many ways uh, that they can be a part of that. Um, people need to just come back and, and Ghanaians need to open up and be friendly with them. The governments as they come in, whether it's MPP or NDC, they all need to be involved and have incentives for African Americans, for the diasporans to come back to Ghana. You know, things like tax write-offs, so many other things that foreign countries provide that countries here don't provide. So, um, you know, it's very important that Ghana as a country look at incentives that will make Ghanaians uh, come back and make that diasporans come back and be a part of this. Business friendly environment, uh, tax write-offs, so many incentives are available and, and should be available to people that want to relocate back to Ghana. For instance, let's talk about the work you've been engaged in ever since you returned. You, you've been part of that process. Uh, tell us the story of your organization and what you're seeking to yes, do. Yes, yes. Um, my organization, Omega Sci-Fi, um, is part of what they call a D9 organization. It's an international organization of, of 
uh, five sororities and four fraternities. And so we're all international. We have uh, great leaders like uh, Martin Luther King or, um, or um, Kwame Nkrumah was a member of a fraternity. Um, so many people all throughout history, Steve Harvey. And so we're a big organization. We all have chapters here in Ghana. Um, the Omega Psi Phi started the first chapter here in Ghana in 2011. Um, I was a co-founder of that. And so more D9 organizations are coming. We're huge. We're doing donations. We're doing contributions. I run an NGO called Team CSR Ghana that provides wells and it provides schools. We build schools. We build clinics. We do so many things in Ghana to support the needy. And this is what we need the diasporas to come back and do. Not only do business, but they need to give back to society. They need to give back to Ghanaians. They need to make sure that they're investing also in the infrastructure of the, of the country. And so again, the government needs to make incentives for that. Tax write-offs for donations, things like that, all help in being able to um, incentivize people to come back to Ghana. So that, that's sort of some of the things that can be done. Okay, uh, let's talk about what you look forward to. That black star is still there and beneath it, will be that historic speech. Well, what major policy announcement are you expecting from the U.S. Vice President? Well, I think that she should be announcing ways that USA and Ghana can, co can um, work together. You know, there should be opportunities besides just loans and other things. There should be business opportunities. There should be opportunities for Americans and uh, Ghanaians to be able to work together. That's what I want to hear from her message. Just what is the USA providing for Ghanaians and businesses and things like that, you know? Besides just Ghana being an open environment, you know, we don't want people coming here and taking advantage of Ghana. You know, we want to know what are they giving us in return? What are they bringing to the table? So I would like to hear a lot of that from her speech today. Do, do you see Ghana positioning itself uh, in the eyes of the world as that center of doing business and, and welcoming investment? I, I think so. I think it's huge. I mean, today here you have uh, Spike Lee here. You have so many people. You know, you have the D9 organizations coming all the time. The NAACP uh, president is here. Uh, so many people are here. And so I think that Ghana is becoming the gateway to Africa. You know, not only do we have the slave castles here and things like that uh, for people to connect with their ancestors, but again, it's just a, a welcome environment. It's, the, it's almost it's the first stop now for people coming to Africa. And so this is very, very huge for Ghana. Ghana needs to be proud of that. Ghana needs to take advantage of that. And um, Ghana needs to, you know, um, use that to its benefit. And finally, I see that the creatives are also here. Uh, so it's a cross-section of, 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 of the public a fair representation of all walks of life. Um, about the creatives itself, you were talking about the arrival of Idris Elba, Spike Lee and all of these guys who are in town. Uh, how should our creatives equally be taking advantage of this? Well, I think that the, um, the entertainment sector, the um, artists, the fashion um, um, people, they're all doing so much um, and they need to take advantage of that. You know, we have um, uh, one of our fraternity brothers, uh, Kwaba Samoa with Custom Looks. He designed so many of these dashikis that we wear, that you see guys over here wearing and things like that. And so there's a market. There's a market for African goods, African entertainment, African music, um, all of that. And so Ghanaians, this is a right opportunity this is beyond the year of return this is the future of return you know so I think that you know Ghanaians need to take advantage of that yes sir and indeed where we stand now uh, was that prophetic place where Dr. Kwame Nkrumah made the pronouncements that indeed Africa is the future and we're getting to that Jonathan thank you for joining us uh, so much and Jonathan is uh, one of many uh, thousands of people who are here uh, in the public waiting earnestly to hear from the US Vice President. I will just give you a feel of what's happening around uh, both to my right and left I'm saddled uh, of course I'm of course in the saddle of, of uh, a, a lot of people and you can't just count the numbers but from the security briefings we had earlier the indication was that over 10,000 people are expected to be around here so that indeed tells you uh, that we're expecting a lot more people to come here uh, but if you're watching as you're on the Joy News channel and we're giving you that special coverage uh, of the US Vice President Kamala Harris who is in